Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I am back to do some work on my Roxy Journal of Stitchery, my Huswif or Needle Roll. So a little recap for you. I'm using all materials that I found while on holidays in Alpine Victoria, in and around um, Brighton, Harrodsville, Myrtleford and Beechworth. So my base is going to be this lovely aged um, linen table runner. It's going to give me plenty of um, both width and also length because I want mine to be sizable. I know some of the needle rolls were quite petite to like just fit in a pocket. Um, I want this to be one that's the size that I can actually keep a lot in it because I do like pockets and I do like quite a few elements. So I think it's going to be the perfect width um, because I want to make some quite sizable pockets across it. Um, I've had the idea to use these beautiful little tapestry, um, I think someone took sample fabric and made it into little tapestry placemats and I think these are just going to make the most wonderful little pockets and to go across it. Um, I also shared a video and I'll link to it where I made these little matchbox, um, fabric covered matchbox and fabric lined um, matchboxes. So I've got two of those and one of these so they'll sort of um, sit across it like that probably I think at the very bottom for these but I'm not going to work out my placement until I've actually got all the elements done. I also shared in one of my little op shop haul videos how I'm going to use these which I think were originally for um, like a little coaster that would slip over the bottom of a wine glass or possibly a candle holder I'm not sure um, but they're the perfect size for these orophil or other threads I've also got a box of beautiful vintage um, wooden um, spool threads as well that I thought would look fantastic in here but what I want to work on with you this evening is a needle book type element and I got the, this beautiful blanket, I actually got three blankets, um, this Onka Paringa um, Australian made pure new wool, um, very vintage blanket from an op shop. It had um, satin sort of uh, edging on it and all the satin was starting to fray away so it's clearly very old. Um, these are quite sort of treasured, treasured items, many households would have had an Onka Paringa. Um, Given that a lot of our manufacturing in Australia has actually gone offshore, it's actually really lovely to have something made in Australia, pure new wool. Um, so I've decided to give some new life to part of the blanket in my um, needle roll and to make a little needle book, but also a pocket to hold some of my other needles. Sometimes I don't want to take all my needles actually out of their cases. I'd like to just keep them in their cases and have them available to myself. So I want it to double double purpose. And you might be used to traditional needle books that would sort of have multiple pages and you'd flip them this way. I've decided I want to use this section. And I think what I'm going to do is... And it's interesting, this blanket, I guess because it's been used over time, it's sort of, um, yeah, it doesn't always lay perfectly straight, but I think it will be. I cut basically along, um, yeah, the line, so I think it should be pretty, pretty good. So I'm just going to fold it so that I will have a double, double weight of the wool here, because that's where I'll be putting my needles into. I want to have this sort of whitey, whitey line up the top and that can kind of be my, my straight line and then I want it to fold over something, something like that. Um, and as you can see, even where they had the stitching of the um, satin sort of binding or silk binding on it, it's sort of, um, yeah, gathered in a bit along, along that, but I don't mind that at all. So I think that's how I want it to be. So what I might do is put a little clip, clip and clip in. Um, and then just thinking, I will probably want to then, I think, just put a little stitch along here on the inside to get this piece to sit down. So we might start by doing that. Uh, I'm wondering what color thread I want to use. Will I use some of my new, that one's pretty good. Just having a look what 
else I've got in the colours. That's a bit too blue. Let's have a look at any of these ones. That one could actually... It's probably almost a bit too on the grey side, I think. I think I'll, I think I'll give this one a, a go. I think that would be quite nice along there. It won't really be that visible because it'll be on the on the base and I'll probably just stitch it so that it's not stitching all the way through to the through to the back. And then what I'm thinking on the front before I get too carried away is I'm thinking I'll couch down some of this wool that I got um, in the Elp, in the um, op shops up in Alpine Victoria and write the word needles on here down along along this edge so we'll probably won't get all of that done but I'll show you the process for that um, and I'll just show you the process for how I'm going to put it together even if we don't get it get it all done but we can spend let's spend an hour together and see what we can indeed get done in that time so let me just have a look see if there's a, a needle that I want to want to use had a lovely dinner of some rice with broccoli and corn and some homemade hamburgers with it and some pickles and some beetroot. It's been a hot hot day here in Melbourne again today I think we are going to be having cool weather coming I even heard there's going to be some snow in Tasmania which is amazing. Okay which way do I want to work? So it's just so lovely seeing everyone's um, yeah different different approaches to these, and that's the great thing about these projects is we can all do we can all do something that meets our our own needs and our own styles, and we can share those. So I'm just going to do a little whipped stitch. Just could do a blanket stitch along here, but I don't think I really need to because it's just going to be on the inside inside anyway. It's really just to uh, make sure that it, this doesn't kind of move around too much or get um, sort of get picked up by the things that I store in it given I'll have little packets that might have sharp edges. Well not sharp edges but um, have edges on them. The little needle packets etc. And so underneath me up here on my surface I've also got another one of the blankets that I picked up because I've been having a lovely play with some amazing tools that I happen to find um, two engineers that live just outside of Bright that had invented um, and now produce their own needle felting tools. So Snowy Creek Engineering. I will do another separate video because I'm just super enthused about the possibilities um, for my texture pieces. But yeah, how wonderful that I was actually looking up to see if I could buy any fibres. Um, I was thinking maybe some wools and other things while I was in Bright. Um, and then I just happened to, when I was typing in felting and felting supplies, yeah, their, their little website came up and they have amazing reviews from people that um, say they make the very best felting tools. Um, they just make two, a single and a multi, and they sell the, um, the best German needles to go with it. Um, and so, yeah, I was able to go out to their farm and meet them. So, yeah, I'll share all about that in another video. But how wonderful. What a small, funny little world we live in. Now, I'll try and stay on camera. I realised in my Easter egg um, scrappy video, I think I just kept going off camera. I had to cut out chunks of it because I was just like, nope, not on camera at all. That was, that was filming on holidays, so I didn't have my usual filming set up in action. This Wonderfeel thread is really lovely. It's a, it's a slightly thicker one. Um, what weight did I say it was? Number, number 12. Does that mean it's a 12 weight? Mako 12. But yeah, I got that from the little quilt store in Bright. So that fits the criteria of just using things that I got, got there. I was going to allow myself to use threads from <clears throat> threads from my stash. But extra good that I'm able to use this one. So yeah, just doing little little stitches to just anchor, but I'm not going all the way through to even the front. I'm keeping my finger under it, so it just is just picking up a layer, a layer of the blanket. And that's why I figured the blanket would be so good for the needle, 
the needle book because it won't the needles won't sort of poke through it gives them something quite good to, to stick into and I've also got this little I don't know oh now I can see where it's gone I'll show you in a merest of moments as you can see I get very excited and want to tell you all the all the goss <laughs> everything that is exciting me at that given time I think I'm still on a on a high from my my Fleur Woods workshop and two glorious weeks of of holidays. Um, everyone at, at work, well not at work, just on the on the screen today, um, remote working was saying how relaxed and happy I looked. So it's got to be a good thing. So let's just double check. Obviously, with those like that, we won't be able to fold it over. So there we are. So yeah, I think that will be I think that will be really super. I like that it almost looks like a little little stamp or or label, but yeah, really wanted to have that incorporated in. So next up, I wonder if we will do our and originally I was thinking I would use this wool to do a blanket stitch, but now I'm thinking I really like the look of this particular thread. Hmm, choices, choices. I'll try, I'll try doing, I've got way too much wool here, so I'll just cut it, cut it in half. Let's see how it looks if I do do use this wool for the, the blanket stitch. Probably depends how well this wool will even pull through the wool blanket as well. That's going to be the question. Um... Yeah, I might use thread along this edge because if I'm going to be couching, then I probably don't want to do couching along. I'm oh, not couching. I don't want to use thick wool along that edge. Here, I will just straighten this up a smidgeroo. And then let's start the process of, of couching. Not couching, of um, blanket stitch. Why do I keep saying couching? Okay, it does seem to pull through, so that's okay. Now, what am I doing? I'll go up this way actually, because then I can see the direction that I'm working in. I was going to go up, wasn't I? Up or down? And I could do my German knotted, but I think I'll just do a regular, just a regular couching. Hopefully I'm staying on camera, yes. Yeah, so many things I want to be working on at the moment. I've got Easter decoration, more Easter idea plans, but I'm just super enthused by the um, texture, texture work, and super enthused by this um, needle roll. So there's yeah, there's no shortage of good things to do. That's for sure. Let's just check if it's looking all good on that side. Yep, looking nice. And yeah, I think this wool's nice. It's sort of got the got some of the colours, bringing a bit of the grey in as well, which will be good for sort of some of some of these pieces. But I think it's all going to go together nicely. I kind of want it to be a little. No, I don't want it to be matchy matchy. I want it to look like something where people have have their little saved special possessions that they're incorporating into their their needle roll and the fact that you'd use an old blanket and things like that I think that's and an old table runner I think it's kind of fitting with the with the ethos so I'm just making sure I'm sort of keeping this line straight it's good having this line as both a bottom and a top guide for for my blanket stitch Mm, 
missing the lovely Roxy family and Wynette when it's now back in the, the US. Be sure to check out her channel if you haven't. She does slow stitch. Hopefully she'll be doing more texture work like, like me and others. Um, and she also does amazing journals and things and she's just such a lovely, lovely lady. Hope to see her again, even though she says so many places, so many places to travel. Although we were we were chatting about um, earlier in the year, she'd um, or was it last year? I've, I've lost track of time. Yeah, she'd found an amazing retreat with F French general in in France at a chateau, and she was trying to get her sort of family members or others to to join her, um, but she couldn't unfortunately get anyone there. But how wonderful would that be? It's just a bit hard with Travis now because we don't want to leave him for. Well, we don't really leave them for any periods of time, but yeah, when we go, when we used to go to Europe, we would go for months at a time and travel, travel all around. So can't really, can't really bear to do that these days with Trav the dog. We would miss him too much, and he would miss us too much. I think. Gosh, he's a funny boy. But he loved his holiday too. He particularly loves the loves the swims and rivers. So the second week in in Bright was fabulous. He did have some swims up in um, the Southern Highlands, but given quite a few of the national parks um, or a lot of the parky areas that had rivers and things in them were national parks. He couldn't couldn't go. He did get to go in one one waterfall, one top of the waterfall on the lead to make sure he didn't didn't end up having a mishap. I never go that close to the, the edges either. Not afraid of heights, but yeah, just afraid of clumsy things that happen and can cause cause accidents. And I am a bit of a bit of a klutz at the best of times. <laughs> yeah, I think that's gonna look so lovely. I do like that and I like the fact that it's got that sort of yeah twist in it. It just makes the blanket stitch look even more interesting. And being um, bulkier, it sort of means that you don't have to be quite as, as perfect. No, I do love it. Love, love, love. I think we're allowed to love our own work, aren't we? It's so nice. This blanket just feels beautiful. Mum was like, how can you cut into those beautiful blankets? And I'm like, well, they're sitting in an op shop in a four dollar tub um, no one's giving them any love so isn't it better that I that I put them to good use but this would actually make a lovely scarf or something so I could do a blanket stitch around it could do some felting on it so many possibilities now with felting the lovely Annie Claxton um, does amazing things with felting. She's only just recently sort of come back to it. I think she had done felting in the past, probably that's why she does such amazing things now. Um, but yeah, really enthused by the possibilities of combining that into my, my texture, texture work. So stay tuned for a video on that. I also need to do a little video on how I make my little toadstools um, for my texture pieces, like my nature's nature's textures um, that wasn't something that I that we were taught in the course so I'll happily happily share my method because that's just something I came up with while I was playing at the workshop but yeah I won't won't share any of the techniques that were specific to the workshop but I do want to do some texture play um, with you because I know many of you are interested in having a go yourself so I figure we can we can play and take our practice in other directions as well and share that as we go along yeah absolutely respect those that put together courses that I won't sort of share their their bespoke techniques so for example the creating of the base would be something that I wouldn't wouldn't do a video on that because that wouldn't be that wouldn't be fair to Fleur so I think I'll just tie it off here Oops, got the end caught in. Oh goodness, which one's the end? Okay, just maybe go through one more time just to be sure to be sure. And then I might just secrete that end in. So I'm going to pull my needle, pull the thread through. 
oops so what we do is we put the thread so it's just just at the in fact the other way like this and then we secrete our needle into into the seam so I'm just trying to make sure it's not popping out either end and we cut our thready thready bit off and then we uh, pull 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 get the end in there pull the end tight and then chop it off and the end will sink back into our piece and I'm going to save this bit and this bit because as when we get to my felting you'll see that they can be they can be put to good use so now I can take these clippy bits off and that that looks really lovely really pleased with that I think that's going to make such a nice little little edge how lovely yeah that's fabulous and yet we've got our stitch down stitch down edge down here which is great um, I mean the funny thing is you can end up with so many pockets like I could even have a little pocket here if I wanted but I think I am going to I will do the same I won't repeat it on camera um, I thought we could move on to the needle a lot the, the couching down of the word needle next but I will do the same blanket stitch right down through all three sides if we get time we can come back and do that but let's for now move on to doing our couched down needle and I wonder if I will use this one so when I do Touching down it's whether I yeah I think I'll probably just lay it down and then stitch into it sometimes I bring the needle up but I don't want to have any um, ends on this side so I think I will actually just couch it down from the front whether I want to do a little knot to start it off let's have a look No, I don't think I actually want the knotted end, so I'll just go back to the the non-knotted. And I guess we can just start out with this bit. Or will I use, put that in my Oorts, Oorts jar, and I think I might even use, how would this one? Or what else do I have in my threads? good but I am wondering about this one I actually think that would be even better and I don't even mind if I could see a bit of that one because it's got a lovely glisten and I've just managed to drop the roll onto the the floor but I'll leave it to a roll from down there just try not to lose it and we will thread up cut that raggedy end off And another idea with this, if you wanted it to even be a jewel needle case and a pin cushion, what you could even do, just to give you as many ideas as possible, and I've knocked something else off my desk, which I don't know what it was, but we will find it in a moment, um, is you could even do part of this as a little stuffed pin cushion as well. But I'm going to be coming up with a, sharing something different for a pin cushion for mine. sit about there that's good and yeah come over like that so we don't have to decide that now anyway um, we'll just start doing our couching down so what I might do is hide the end again I'm not going to go all the way through to the back because I don't want to see the stitches on the back of here so as you can see I've not actually gone through I'm going to cut off the little taily bit of the, the tail and then I'll just put a, another little anchoring stitch in in here and then we can start the process of couching couching down so couching down means basically putting little stitches over a thicker 
um, fibre on the front. Or you can do it over something thin, but it works particularly well when you don't want to be actually stitching with um, a fibre like this, which might struggle to get through some things, even though it would have gone through the blanket. And so what I'll do, I think, is follow along and put the little couching stitches over where the sort of direction of the of the fiber is although it doesn't actually really matter I was thinking I'd put it in the exact middle there but I don't think I'd actually need to get that precise about it so what direction do I want it to go on a bit of a slant I think I do and I don't think it even matters if it goes over the gray as well Do it sort of on the diagonal, but not not aiming for perfection, just aiming for a nice, nice finish. So I want a nice sort of pointy bit up the top, so let's see how I go with that. And then probably still want to go up a smidge further. A smidge. Who else says a smidge? What's your measure of something small? A touch, a tad? What else do we say? Now, I'm just thinking as I stitch this that I've got to do a 4,000 subscriber giveaway. Now, I haven't done any preparation at all for this, um, so we're just going to make it up as I, as I film this video. Um, so I think, what day is it now? This will get probably loaded up tonight if my internet loads it at a decent pace, which is Monday, Monday night. So I will give you a full a full week so through to Monday in a week's time and I don't know the don't know the dates because I don't have um, them handy on my calendar I could look at that but a week from now a week from when this video is posted um, and what I'm going to get you to do is to put a comment below this video if you would like to win a bespoke slow stitch pack so basically where I will shop my stash and find wonderful goodies to send you anywhere in the world that I'm allowed to send to from Australia um, and I will um, get in touch with the winner and get them to sort of let me know what they what they'd like to add into their slow stitching um, stash and I will then shop my stash and put together a package you can see packages I've put together for others in the past um, and if you'd like to enter what I am going to get you to do and I just realized I've been stitching through to the back does that worry me or should I go back and actually um, I think I do want to do I does that worry me or is it going to actually just add a nice little detailing because I've already got stitching there I'm actually going to just keep going the way I am going even though originally I was thinking I would just go around it. But I think couching actually does look, work better if it is actually stitching into it. I can always put something along there if it bothered me, but I think I'll just embrace it. Um, okay, so back to, back to Focus Christine. Um, if you would like to go into the drawer for it, um, pop down in the comments something an element that you are either if you're taking part in this um, project that you're adding to your needle roll or hoosif or hoosif um, an element so it might be a needle book it might be a pin cushion might be something else really interesting that you're you're adding to your your needle roll um, and then I will enter all of those that add a comment that includes that um, into into the drawer which I will do in a week and a bit's time once I've allowed entries to close on Monday a week from now, Australian time. Um, usually I give a little bit of leeway in case anyone else is in a totally different time zone and doesn't quite get the doesn't quite get it in, in time. So I'll snipperoo this off here. So that will be my N for needle. I can just pass what I might do then is pass my needle down to where 
then actually I'll do one more stitch here I think just to make sure that one stays stays well anchored but yeah I don't think I'm gonna worry that's not going to worry me when I have my when I have my needle book I'm not going to worry about those little I just think it will yeah add some nice little a little random pattern a little bit of random mark making along there okay but I can between these areas pass my needle down by passing it just between the layers and popping it out somewhere somewhere where I need it I'll take it down to about here for now so that's just passed the thread down so yeah if you want to enter just pop something pop in a comment that says something you would add to a needle roll if you were making one or if you are making one so I don't know how big I want to go I want to have the E so that you can actually tell its knee so maybe I can actually just put a maybe that can be the top of my top of my E I'll give myself a bit more end even if I need to cut it off to keep it enough away from the edge that it's not not going to fall down off the edge isn't it funny when we get stitching we actually sometimes forget what it was we were planning to do like the just going through the surface but I just yeah I'm actually the more I think about it couching definitely works best when you're going right right through okay. so you don't want to go down too low yes yeah, so I'll just go so I won't need all of that end of the E better to have a bit more than um, not enough probably do one more bit the E then, yep, I think that will be right that off save our little little bit because it is going to be useful for something you will see in a preview in a future not a previous video a future video I think I'm still high on creativity from from the retreat jauntling along not making much sense but definitely happy 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 creativity such a such a high isn't it and being around lovely creative people when you find your tribe and you get to play with your tribe for a week how amazing is that so many other lovely folks I would have loved to be there too folks all around the world that are lovely creative souls and some folks that I just know would have absolutely adored and relished the opportunity to not everyone can not everyone can take off on a on a retreat so I do know how fortunate I was to to get the opportunity I was chatting with another girl at work today and I was just saying she yeah, she was saying oh you look so relaxed so happy what have you what have you been up to what did you do on your holidays and I was telling her all about it and she's like wow that sounds amazing and I said to her yeah make sure you do we all as women tend to fill others cups before we fill our own um, and it's important that we actually do that because it makes us a, a happier and a more um, more able to then give to others not that that should be our sole purpose in life but it is definitely one of the things um, we do tend to do as as women um, nurturing and giving to others and so yeah it's important we nurture ourselves 
absolutely important. So now I'm going to pass my needle again just through through the wool without coming through to the other side if I can manage it. Don't know how well I'm doing on that, but we shall see. Just need to take it a bit further along. Maybe pop it out about there. It's pretty good. And E. Don't know if I spaced it out too much, but I think it'll be okay. D, L, E. I think I won't run out of room. So I might even just go a smidge over from there. A smidgeroo, so you actually even didn't get just a smidge then, you got a smidgeroo. It's even less than a smidge, I think. And the good thing is with the couching, if you, you can sort of um, adjust the wool when you don't have that many stitches holding it in place. So I just wanted to get a bit more tail, even though I won't need all of it. Just to know I've got that got that option. That will work. So it does take a little bit of time the couching down, but it's a great way just to get some fun some fun letters. Yeah, I don't think I need all of my tails, so I might chop it off about there. And then I want my E to be something like that, I think. That looks pretty similar to the other E. Oops, just undid it. Give my thread a bit more of a twist just to get a nice twistiness to it. Hopefully you can still see as well. Okay. I always find E's quite tricky when I'm doing the stitching of them like as an actual stitch thing, but they're not too bad to catch down as long as you hold the hold the loop. Yeah, really enjoying this Orofil thread. Very glad I shouted myself that from the from the Bright Quilt store. Given we want to live in Bright one day, um, be good to have a quilt store in town. Because sometimes you do want to get some some supplies, whether it's some interfacing or a little pack of threads. So I do like to support the regional ones where I can. Because I think they're lovely for the little towns to have have a place like that for people to go, even to do little courses or little little stitchy gatherings. I know that's what Zoe at Green Door Studio, she has lovely little stitchy and other artistic gatherings. I think Juju goes to those. How wonderful would that be? Just got a wind tat so can become a lady of leisure. Lady of creativity, not leisure. Well, I guess, yeah, creativity is leisure, isn't it? But Okay, and needle. Wouldn't it be funny if I misspelled something? Pretty good at spelling in life, but when I get, when I get distracted, maybe not so much. Okay, get that out of the way. I'll pass the needle along through the wool again to the extent that I can. to there. Now, what do I want to do next here? Start about there. Need to go a bit further along. Pop out. Okay. Mm, 
Mm -hmm. Maybe I popped down a bit too far over. Let's just pass it back, back a little bit. Sometimes I think it's just getting that first stitch in. Once you get it sort of anchored, then you can see how it's all going to all going to position. I'll just give myself an extra little bit of tail there. So we'll bring our D round, and then we can maybe cut it off, and or well, actually maybe just lay a single bit up there, possibly. What do we think? I say what do we think as though you can all respond to me but you can while you're stitching away I'm sure it will make its way to me in the universe might just not be on this particular <laughs> project I do like to think you're all out there and then when you're talking at your screen saying do this Christine or don't do that or didn't you say you were just going to work on the the surface of the piece and you're stitching through to the back It'll just be like a bit of Mr. Squiggle who I used to watch on TV and he'd um, turn little squiggles and make an entire picture upside down out of them. Upside down. There was the, the blackboard. I think I have talked about Mr. Squiggle before. I think I might have found some people at the time that, that knew of Mr. Squiggle and Miss Jane, who was his, his assistant. Probably back in the time when Kids TV, the assistant was always the lady and the, the main character was usually a bloke, although actually not, not always on... Play school. So I might just make a little loop and then we'll do a long bit for the for the rest of the D. So I'll just overlap these two ends and couch them down like that. Yeah, I think on my pin cushion I'm going to write pins. Just doing some labelling because at least having a larger um, needle roll as well it gives me a bit of space to do some things like this. Just give myself a bit more length as well. Catch down. I like the letters have a bit of whimsy in them. But yeah, definitely loving working with fibres at the moment. I like the feel, the textures. So nice stitching into our nature's textures pieces with the blanket on the back of them. That's why I got all these um, blankets. Um, I figured I see lots of texture pieces in my future. Which I know many of you have been saying, hope you're going to do some more, some more texture play. I most definitely am. Just so, so enthused that I wouldn't be able to stop even if I wanted to. Whatever we think that looks, yeah, I think that's nice. And then we just need to do LES. So it's good that I had a, a decent sized space. L E S, yep, we'll be able to fit that on. So where are we up there? We'll bring our needle down through the through the wall, trying just to stay between the layers. Nope. We haven't stayed between the layers, have we? We have come through. So we might just need to undo that stitch. Stitches do almost secrete them in at times. Oh, I need to cut this in to get it with the thread. I think I will because I think I just shredded the end of that. Needles. So where was I going to go? I was going to go, could probably just go directly across from the top. Actually, 
Oops. Let's just try and stay near the surface here. Okay. I need to go down a smidge. Why does this white piece of wool keep trying to infiltrate? It wants to be part of the the needle roll. I'll leave a little loopy end on it, I think. She'll come over this way. It's amazing how time flies when you're stitching away. <laughs> it was light outside when I started and now it's dark and my um, room overlooks the street so I do sometimes wonder when I've got the lights blaring in here, haven't got the blinds closed, whether people are looking up see me talking away to my window because I have the window yeah, directly, directly in front of my desk and I've got my piles of beautiful threads and materials next to me so I wonder if anyone ever looks up if they're walking the streets taking their dog for a walk or something and wonders what's that girl doing she's talking away she's got a camera suspended next to her next to her head she's staring down at her desk and she's yabbering away in summer I sometimes have the well it is I mean it's still very summery weather but got the aircon on tonight but sometimes have the window open I do wonder if people walking by sort of think who on earth is she talking to? Talking to my peeps. Talking to my crew. My mates. My stitching buddies. The people who I, those that have YouTubes, I watch you, those that post pictures, I look at your pictures and yeah, you get to know people. And then those are magical times when you actually get to, to meet someone that you have got to know through stitching is such a such a magical thing but even if you never get to meet the connections that you can form they are remarkable yeah I like that I actually like my little mark making along here I can always go and do some more mark making if I really want to to make it blend in Okay, what am I going to do here? Well, I start my E about about there, like so. I think that'll work. Let's get bold. Let me know if you like couching or if you haven't tried it before and you're going to give it a go. Yeah, op shops are great places for all sorts of random random yarns. I can also get them from the reverse art trucks. I might have to do a little texture mission because I'd previously been getting sort of wools I could stitch with, but now that I'm doing texture pieces, I might even look for some, and felting potentially. Well, not potentially, I will be doing felting, so I can also use them for felting. Almost done threading. Hopefully, I can get needle done. That should be right, I think. As I say, go for the whimsical. It's going to be unique to you. And that's what we want our stitching to be. If it looks like someone made it with a machine, what's the point? Obviously things are great when you make them with the machine and some people, yeah, will be doing machine things, but when I do hand stitching, I want it to look 
I want it to look hand done. Not done by an embroidery machine. Just do another little stitch in here just to hold that nice and securely. Maybe another one just over here just for good luck. And then I think I'm going to have to tie this end off here and I'll secrete the end into the into the wool if I can. And then we'll just need to do our S. I'll just need to get another little bit of thread for, for that stage. So can I get my end to secrete in? And so if I cut it off just near the surface, the end should just sink into the into the wall. Okay, so needle. And then we need an S and I need my thread which fell on the floor but I've still got the end of it up here. So that is good. We are happy about that. I love when I can make immediate use of my new supplies or old supplies, old blanket, old wool, new thread. All from around bright. Okay, an S. How are we going to approach our S? So again, I might put my starting stitch in on the surface here and hide it under the under the wool. So I guess I can start somewhere about there. So secrete the end there and just go over it a couple of times to hold it in place. Okay, and then let's start the process. started and just put an extra stitch in just to, to hide that little bit. So yeah first day back at work today after the holidays wasn't yeah wasn't too bad. You know how it always is you're just so relaxed from the holidays and you're like do I really even if you like your job which I, I'm lucky I do like my job most of the time. I didn't love doing a whole organizational change process last year but that is is done and hopefully done done for a while now um, and yeah lucky that I love my job but it would still be such a lovely thing to not have to not have to work to just create to just have time to create to grow things to focus on Lovely walks, playtime with the dog, simple pleasures. Because honestly, if um, if I got lucky and if I had a major windfall come my way, I would not be out buying expensive things. I would be living a simple life. Don't need another car. Got not a car that I don't know how how old my car is now. I've had a long time. But it runs perfectly well. Doesn't have a lot of doesn't have a lot, a lot of mileage on it. So why would I need another car? I think it's that gift of yeah time. I think that's the precious that's the precious gift, isn't it? That ability to just not be on someone else's schedule, just be on your own own schedule. And what luxury it would be to just be stitching stitching during the days look forward to my stitching time at night. I know some good folks like Leanne from Leanne's Crafty Cupboard, she fits in stitching in the morning. But I tend to be on the sort of the Travis, Travis morning routine and I do start work reasonably, reasonably early just to kind of get a, a kick on the day. I figure seeing I'm not commuting to work most mornings I can yeah be, be online and starting to, to kick off the day. So there we go, that is our needles. I do just need to finish this one off and I'll put another another little securing stitch in here, I think. And then again we will put a little a little tie on the back. And I'll just secrete my end 
again into into the wall. Maybe I'll run it down this way. If I can pop it through, pull it a bit tighter, and then chop it off, and the end will slip back in to the wall. So there we go. So I won't make you watch any more. I will go away and I will um, do blanket stitch around. I think I'll use yeah this this thread maybe to just do a really a lower key blanket stitch along here. But then I think along here, here, and down here I will use the wool because I think that would look lovely. But yeah, along this edge, I just think I want to keep it keep it lower lower key. Um, yeah, and I don't I don't mind that. I think it's actually a really lovely little design element along there. Um, just nice little shapey shapey bits, and yeah, really really happy with this. I think it's going to be a great little um, pocket, great place to put. Where has my um, my pin cushion gone? I'm just looking for some actual needles in my pin cushion. There they are. It'll be just a really great place to yeah put the needles needles through like that, but then also have a pocket into which I can put my packets of needles as well. So that's going to be super super duper handy. So thanks for watching, and I'll be back in another episode to share a pin cushion as well and we'll just keep building um, elements for our little needle roll. Oh the other bit that I wanted to add to this is I've got this which I think is meant to be a little needle um, holder. I think I got it from Purveyor or Ring Claim Textiles or possibly in one of my vintage thread lots. And so I was thinking that what I'll do with this is um, put some little stitches through and make some little loops that can hold it in place because I think that can probably actually just stay um, on it on here permanently and then when I need something out of it I can just take um, the lid off or I could have it so it can slip in where the little loops are so I'll have a play play with that um, and work out or it could just sit in the pocket as well actually that's another thought maybe I'll do that but it will be a little a little piece that I'll have in there because I want to put some of my more vintage pieces as well that otherwise just sort of float around my, my craft room in there. Thanks for watching and remember if you wanted to um, take part in my little giveaway for 4,000 subscribers, um, just post a comment below saying something that you would add to your needle roll or your hoose swift or something that you are adding to yours. Thanks everyone and bye.